Diversity and integration starts within our own context and we cannot come closer than to our family. Who is that child, that family member that feels totally different of all the others? The child where you as a parent think, but how did we make him? He's so different from us. That's the different child that learned you most about real life. Is the child that is challenging, the child that keeps you alert, the child that makes you smarter, the child that was learning you that it's always easier to know, but not always to perform, to realize. So we need diversity in our own small inner circle and that shows us the way. Diversity and integration, it's a right. And if we can develop that faculty, we will help in the first place children who belong to our own families. Hi there. May I interrupt you a moment? Yes? Well, it's a thing that I want to inform you about. Our precious Earth is sick. The temperatures are raising due to climate change and species are getting extinct even thousand times faster than ever reported. Our nature is losing track. And what are we doing? We are buying things we don't need, with money we don't have, and an environmental impact we don't want. And you know, if we do what we always did, we get what we always got. So I think we must break with traditional thinking, catalyze for a new vision, and join hands in a new partnership for a sustainable future. And this is my opinion what the Open University of Diver Diversity is all about. Thinking out of the box, in an open atmosphere, bridging, bridging several disciplines, trying to find sustainable solutions for the future. The Open University of Diversity, powered to the excellent work of Koen van Mechelen, will prove that there is a sustainable direction we can go to, together. And they can count, surely, on my support. Hi, I'm Dawn Bennett. Diversity has had a profound impact on my life, both personally and professionally. Personally, because I'm a person of mixed ethnic heritage. I'm Filipino, Chinese, Portuguese, Spanish. And I was raised in Hawaii and now live in New York City, both places that are known for the diversity of cultures, um, religion, and ethnicities. Professionally, because I'm the executive director of Urban Glass, which is the oldest and largest open access uh, glass working facility in the United States. Diversity is a core value of our organization. We not only welcome divergent points of view, people of different backgrounds, religious values, cultural values, uh, walks of life. We actually seek them out. Uh, we seek them out because we believe that this enriches the dialogue and with a richer dialogue, a more interesting dialogue, comes greater, better, more interesting art. And for us, that's what it's all about. The notion of diversity we usually use is one from biological sciences where you have diversity between species. In the human context, we have to learn to talk, and that's really a difference with the past, about diversity within one species, the human species. This means that we have to think about diversity of humans, humankind, as intrinsic. There's not something like a model human, let's say a Westerner, or uh, maybe a Flemish person or something, and then the others. That's the old, wrong, historically old, uh, but clearly wrong way of dealing with diversity in human matters. That's a form of racism, in fact. Now, shifting to diversity as an intrinsic quality of being a human implies a, an overhaul, a change in almost all the concepts we have used on this sort of thing in, in the past. So it's a complete philosophical stand that we have to develop. Well, I am a scientist studying the genetic diversity in domestic animals. I and Kuhn share the passion for diversity in biology as well as in culture. When I started my research career about 30 years ago, 
I thought that breeders have selected their animals to only to be as productive as possible. But it has become clear to me that humans have a strong affection for diversity, and humans have therefore selected mutations with appealing phenotypes, like sex link barring a chicken. I fully agree with Kohn that our domestic animals harbor the most wonderful collection of interesting mutations. In fact, genetic studies of these mutations have been an important part of my career. I'm very happy that many of the mutations that we have worked with, like yellow skin and rose common chickens, contribute to the extraordinary diversity that we can observe in the Chicken Cosmopolitan project. Thank you. The fact that I found very important to know from uh, the books of Rick Pinkson is that we live in a world with more than 6,000 countries, 6,000 languages, more than 4,000 cultures, and only 193 uh, countries. So it's an utopian way of thinking that we have that we live in a country with only one language, one culture. It's more the exception than the rule. So we have to live with the fact that uh, a diverse a country and a country is like uh, Anderson said, an imagined community. Uh, for me, the work of uh, Koen van Mechelen uh, with uh, uh, an unbelievable obsession for uh, the world of chicken, uh, which has been known al al always uh, by his race. You have the Poulet de Bres, the, the chicken of Malines, uh, and also in the, in the kitchen, in the haute cuisine, in the, the high uh, gastronomic uh, world, we are always speaking about races when, uh, when you talk about chicken. And he would like to mix everything. You could say he is the great Alexander de Grote from Belgium uh, today. In the way he is always uh, trying uh, to, uh, to, to bring the society in a responsibility for exchange between different cultures and different ethnics. And uh, because when you are uh, going in a profound way into the aspect of race, then you make a world more fragile and more uh, vulnerable. Uh, that's why the chicken for him is an important thing to experiment and to study the, the, the importance of exchange. So um, diversity, I think, I think um, diversity will be one of the defining features of the 21st century and of my life as well. Um, I think it sort of tells us something about how we position ourselves towards nature, towards um, our fellow man. And I think this is what Kuhn is doing in, in, in part, you know, he's uh, telling us something about our worldview. As I refer to the Cosmo Golem, I think it's a, it's a very strong concept to, to let communities adopt a work of art and superimpose their values and characteristics of their culture onto that work of art. That is a very con strong concept to me. So, in a way, this is um, looking for a universal truth, but then um, the diversity of forms and of, of, of expressions that it, it, in which that universal truth is delivered to us. As a scientist, diversity in the universe, diversity in nature, is a source of inspiration. It's a fascinating world of beauty that I would like to explore. As a person, diversity for me means that what makes us all the same is that we're all different. Diversity is the beauty of being different. To accept diversity, you accept the concept of beauty. I'm a consilience artist and I use consilience as a tool, as an artistic tool, to create. Consilience is, in a sense, a jumping together of knowledge, um, links you discover uh, through theory or practice uh, to create a kind of common groundwork of explanation. For example, you have the study entomology, you see the, the way insect moves, you have the study of the kinetical, kinetical intelligence of humans, 
you see the Audi move, you can bring links together, and all of these links, you can give new interpretations.